Hello everyone. Welcome back to the .NET office. In this video, we are going to create a Python based online compiler using the Flask. So this tool allows us to write and execute Python code directly in our browser. And for that, uh, for us, no need to install any Python IDE. And even it will help us to uh, like run a small code snipped as well. So let's see first how it look like. So if I will go on the browser, so it will look like this. So here we have to give the code. When we will run this code, it will print the output here. So for an example, when I will print five plus five, and here I can see the uh, 10, the output. Even if I will run uh, like I here, we have the list and when I'm going to print it, we can see the respected output is showing. So this is the way we are going to create it. And uh, Apart from that, to learn this compiler, we should have a basic knowledge on the Python side. And if you are a beginner of the Python and want to learn the Python, you can go to my another uh, playlist where I have uh, like created that uh, all the beginner to advanced level of the Python course, where you will understand everything, how we create and write the code in the Python. You can find that link in the description section as well. So let's see how we can create this particular compiler so for that one we need the flask so flask is basically help us to create a small kind of an application on the web browser for an example if i want to create the api and that basically i can create using the flask also so to do that what i need to do first i need to install the flask so how i can install i will search here flask and when i will run this here it is installing package flask so it will take some time to install this so this code i'm doing in the pycharm you can implement this logic in any different tool as, as well like subline or vs code so currently we can see this package flask is installed as expected now the next thing what i will do here i will create a one file so for that one i'm going to take python file and this python file i will say online compiler so this file i'm going to create it so once this file is created the first thing which we need to do is basically we have to import the flask and to import that one from i'm taking the name as a flask and import it from flask so this library i'm going to use it now if you are uh, worked already in the flask or not then first what we have to do to initiate it we need the flask means basically we need uh, import uh, flask so this uh, so what is the flask basically so this is the core class for creating a flask web application and how we have to import like app equal to and flask and here what we have to do we have to use the name so basically is it identify like we are going to use the flask now the next thing which we have to do we so here what we will do how we are going to create this compiler so it is in combination of the html css and the api and from that html we will call that particular api and that operation will perform so to do that first what we need the uh, we need the api and the html so html we can do in some time so first what we will do we will create the well, like api so first i will create the default api so how we can create that so first we have to define the method and here first i am returning only a uh, hello string so this method i have created now the thing is so this is a normal method but we have to make it as an uh, api endpoint so to make that what we use we use app dot route and i want it as a default route so i will just put as a slash here now so this our default um, like uh, endpoint as an index is created for us now what i want i want to create or i want to run this application on a particular port so you can like we can write as in what we have to do we have to find if name is equal to equal to main means we are running from this application then app dot run and i'm just saying the port is for an example 1010 so this is my port and where i want to run this particular 
application. So at point of this time, when I will run this, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this. So once I'll run this, you are seeing it is currently running on this port. I'll copy this uh, path and here on the another tab, I'll just put it and you are seeing by default, it is returning hello as we printed there. But instead of the hello, what we want, we want basically a HTML page. So for that one, what we have to do, so let's go on the application here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take one variable HTML and here we have to write that HTML code. So as of now in my hands, I'm already having that particular HTML code. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that HTML code here. So let me put it here. And here you are seeing currently this HTML code. It is nothing but as if you know about uh, little bit about the HTML. So we have the head tag. Uh, so first HTML tag inside that head tag we are having. And inside this one we have the style. And then we have the body part. In the, inside this body part we have the this H1 element. Then we have the div for editor. We have the button. And then we have the another ID. So when I will run at point of this time. So it will keep the result as expected means uh, it will not show currently the HTML file. When I will run this, you will see the same. The reason is because we have to still call this HTML object and we have to call it from here. So for that one, what we want, we have to call it. So how we will call it? So for that one, first we have to import another library called render template string. So what is the use of this library? is basically render HTML directly from a string. So that is the purpose of this one. So instead of this one, what I will do, render template string and here I will write HTML. Now when I will run this and will go on the browser and refresh it, you will see one editor. Currently it is not enabled. We have the button and the output part also we are having. Now another thing is what we have to do. We have to like on this button click, I want to see the code from here and want to show the output. So how we have to do, we have to write that particular logic. So to write that particular logic. So now let's create that particular API endpoint. So I'll go here and now what I will do first, let's define that uh, API and what I'm going to do first, we have to create the method and this method name I'm giving as a execute code. And here the endpoint which I'm going to define, let's define the app dot route. And anything we can define it here. So what I'm going to write, I'm going to write as an execute. Execute. And what is the type of this method? So I'm just going to write methods. And here I'm going to define it as an HTTP post. So directly we have to write as an post. So this like the Endpoint of this is execute and the type or the basically HTTP buffs of this is post. So that is the method is defined. Now we have to write the logic. So first of all, what we have to do, we have to take the data. For an example, when I will write some code in that block and when I will click on this button, I want that data. So first I will take a variable called data and here I'm just saying the request. Now this request we have to define top. Now what is the use of this is request. So the use of this request is basically it is used to handle incoming HTTP request. So we have to handle that one. And how we have to get, we have to get the data in the JSON format. So that is the first thing we have taken the data. Now what I'm checking over this one, like not data, I'm saying or code not in data. So I'm checking if there is nothing in that, then I'm just saying return and I want to return it in the JSONify. Now, what is the JSONify is basically it convert Python uh, dictionaries into the JSON format, which can be sent as an HTTP response. So how will you? So first let me define JSONify and here I will say JSONify and inside this one, what we have to define it's basically take as a type of the dictionary. So error, and I'm just seeing any message of this one like invalid code. We can write anything message or like invalid code or invalid record, anything we can find. 
Okay, so now we have checked. For an example, we are not giving anything in that or that particular is not the proper code. We are written in this message. Now the next thing what we have to do, I will take the if that is the correct data, then I'm taking that in the variable called code and then define. And I'm just finding that variable called code. So that I'm taking and then I'm taking the file path. And here I will take one variable called OS. Now what is this OS? So first let's import this OS. Import OS. Now what is this basically an OS? So it provides functions for interacting with the operating system. Now what kind of the function means such kind of an app like uh, file handling. So in that case we need the file handling so for that we are choosing. So os.path and join and here I'm saying os. and here get cwd. Now what is this is basically give the path of this current path current directory of the path where the application is sitting and here I'm just saying temp code dot py. So basically temp code py temporary file we are creating here it insert this data is up to you up to us basically if we want to uh, change this name we can change it. So we have taken the file path. Now the next thing I want to write the logic using the track edge block. So here in the track edge block what I will say first I will say with open file path and I'm just saying w means we have to alter some, some data we have to write it as an f and then f dot write so I will write some data into this file path. So code I am just writing in that uh, file. Now next what I am taking I am just taking one variable called result and here I am taking one uh, variable called sub process dot run. Now first we have to import this sub process. So let me import the sub process. Now what is the sub process? Sub process is basically allowed running external command. In this case like uh, what are we doing? We are running the Python. So basically on the browser, I want to run some code now to understand like which kind of the code it is. So we have to tell uh, like it is a Python code. Sub process basically help us to identify which kind of the external library we are going to run. So now here what I have to do, I have to tell it, it is in Python code. So it is in Python code and for from where it will understand it will basically understand like which is the python code that is the file path which we have given and then it has some property called capture output that we have to make it as in true and another is the basically another property which we have to take is the text that is also we have to give as in true so let me give it as in true so text is equal to Now, what is the purpose of this capture output and this text? So, capture, uh, capture output basically it captured the output both uh, like is basically like for the whatever the output is going and coming. So, it capture both the things and this text true is basically written the output as an string rather than the bytes. So, that is the purpose of this one. Now, after this one, the next thing which we have to do is basically now we have taken this one what we have to do we have to os dot remove means we have got the data then we no need of that particular file so i can remove it now we got the means result everything now we, what we can do we can just take as in result dot written code now i'm checking if written code is equal to equal to zero then what i can say i can return simply just only five like this is correct one only so I, I can say output okay so output and I will just define it as a result dot std out so this I will define it and I will say it is in 200 means the request is successful next I will say the else if it is like there is a some error so I will copy to make it fast and here I will say error anything we can give and I will say that 
it is a 400 means uh, request is not correct and here i will say what is the error so std and er so this i will define it and once okay, result dot okay so this we have done now the next thing which we have to do means we have captured the correct status and the wrong status now the next thing what we want we want the accept means we have to capture the like we have taken the try block now we want the accept block as well so here i'm just taking the exception so exception and i'm just defining it as an e and here what i'm just again i'm writing returnify and here i will say error and then here i will just print it as a str inside this one i will directly write e and sorry so it will be e and i will make it as in like code as in 500 so this i have written so all this code is done so what we have done so far in this so we have defined the endpoint we are taking the data we are checking if there is nothing then we are taking the data in one variable we are just creating one file path in our directory and then what we are putting like once the directory is created we are pushing that code in that particular directory then we are using this sub process sub process as i told it help us to tell like basically to run the external library which kind of the library we want to run so basically we want to run the python once we got the result we are removing that, that file and then we are just capturing the data like either it is an error or successful code so this we have done now the endpoint is created but we have to call that endpoint also from here so that we have to call here and how we have to call the api from the html side then we have to use the async uh, await method and we have to create the basically script inside that we have to create the method so that particular code i am already having with me so i'll put it here and here what uh, if you will see in this script so this code i have pasted just now like the script first we are just taking the editor so for this one we are using ace library now what is this ace library so ace is basically a library that help us like it's basically a code editor it's kind of an editor which are us help us to write particular code so we have to use this ace.js library that i have put it here and here what we have to do we have to take like what in this editor so what is the editor editor we are basically in a div so we are taking in the edit mode we are just making it in edit mode currently you will see it is in read only mode this editor we have to make it as an edit mode so that we are doing then we are setting some theme in this, this then we are setting the mode and then this is the function which we have created in async await mode and we are running that particular method from here now what are we doing in this method first we are getting the data then we are calling that particular method endpoint basically api endpoint in the way of post and then we are calling this method and everything just we got the data in the json format and we are returning and putting the gate element by output so basically this output is nothing but this one okay so now what i will do let me run this and let's see okay so everything is fine this side here so now what i will do i'll refresh this code and currently you are seeing it is coming as expected let me run something here like for an example 5 and when i will run this we are seeing output is coming as expected and apart from that if you want to print anything else which we are having in our code so that also we can do for an example if i want to run this one we can see the output is coming as expected so this is the way we can create the compiler in the python as well so if you want this code you can find that github link in my description section as well so that's it for this video if you have any question and doubt please comment thank you